Howdy y'all, welcome to Nerd Studio and welcome to our first video on Reloading, Reloading Basics. Before we get started, I want to stress a couple of things. First of all, I'm not a reloading expert, so I'm not going to attempt to teach you how to reload in these videos. My goal is really to give you an introduction to how we reload, perhaps uh, give you some tools and, and equipment that we found useful, and maybe some resources that you can use uh, to get started and to become better at reloading yourself. When you're first starting out, one thing you've got to realize, reloading can be very dangerous. So a lot of this video is going to be about the things that we've learned over time to do to minimize the risk involved in reloading. Now, it's a dangerous activity. You screw it up, you can blow your hands off, you can kill yourself. So being safe is key. Let's break that down. Stick to the recipe. First piece of advice. What do I mean by that? Well, you've it's a lot like cooking. You've got uh, your different ingredients and you need to put them together in the proper way to make sure that you get the end product that you're looking for. So let's break down sort of what's in your recipe or what components you're going to be using and talk a little bit about each. Let's talk about these in, uh, we'll take them in reverse order here and talk about bullets first. Bullets come in uh, all kinds of different sizes and are made of various materials. Uh, let me give you a couple examples. It's by no means an exhaustive list because there's so many out there. Uh, you've got your copper jacketed bullets, which are going to be, you know, your full metal jacket, the kind of thing you buy off the shelf. Uh, some of your uh, self-defense ammo, so a full metal jacket uh, or, you know, jacketed hollow point, that kind of thing. Uh, you've got electroplated bullets out of there. It's pretty popular among reloaders uh, from manufacturers like uh, Berry's Manufacturing makes a, an electroplated bullet. Uh, you still got folks out there casting their own lead bullets, and you can buy uh, uh, hard cast bullets from different manufacturers. In fact, we... We're getting ready to, to start doing most of our reloading with hard cast lead. And you've got things like, you know, some funky stuff like polymer coated bullets out there. You can look at uh, like Lucky 13 has a zombie bullet. It's just a polymer coating on the outside of their hard cast lead. So lots of different options and all of them affect your recipe. Primers are your next consideration. Now they come in a bunch of different sizes and you've got to have the right size for the load that you're creating. Also, the brand may be important according to the recipe that you're following. Uh, the brand of the primer can affect how fast the powder burns or how much of the powder burns when the round ignites. So got to watch out for that too. Let's talk about gunpowder next. Now gunpowder, probably not the best term for it. In modern sense, it's really better to refer to it as a propellant, but you're going to hear gunpowder. When you're reading your recipe, looking at the powder that's used is incredibly important. And here's why. If you look at your gunpowders out there, and you can go, you know, look at pictures of these. I'll try and show a few here. Um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And if you think about it, inside your case that you're putting this powder into, the shape and the size of the powder affects how much volume you can actually put inside that case. So if you have small granules, you can actually fit more powder inside the case than say if you had a, like a long stick type powder. And that affects your load. So it's really important and, and how dangerous the load can be. It's incredibly important that you follow the recipe uh, for both the name brand and their model of the powder, as well as the weight. Uh, if you don't follow that exactly, it can be very, very dangerous. Last but not least is your case. Now you can go out and buy brand new cases of new brass, but this is reloading after all, and it's one of the ways that it saves you money is being able to, to fire the round and then reclaim the case and use it again. There are lots of different manufacturers of cases out there, and the case doesn't necessarily affect your recipe but it does affect the overall specification of your bullet. And we'll get into uh, the specifications for different kinds of bullets. And you really have to pay attention to make sure that the case has uh, the right size. As you shoot cases, particularly in uh, rifle rounds that have the, the neck reduced, the case can stretch and you've got to trim that guy back down to meet the overall specification to make sure that the load is safe in the end. That's my summary of components. Let's talk about the recipes. The recipes are going to tell you how much of each ingredient you need to create the load that you want. Makes sense, huh? It's going to tell you uh, the bullet, both the weight and potentially the brand, or at least the makeup of the bullet. It might say, you know, 158 grain full metal jacket. The powder manufacturer and the model of powder, how much of that powder to use to create the load that you want in the end. And typically it'll also list how many feet per second that bullet should move uh, if you use their recipe. And you can test that if you've got a chronograph, you can test how close did you get to the recipe that way. That's the basics of any, uh, any load data recipe out there. 
Uh, where do you get them? Now, we started out with a Spear reloading manual. Spear is a long time uh, reloading component manufacturer out there. Uh, and they have published a manual with all kinds of different load data for a number of years. I think GARS is uh, a version number 14 of that book, and I, I think they're probably on version number 15 now. We also use a website called LoadData.com, which has a lot of user-contributed uh, data. We've uh, never gotten a bad load out of there, and there are lots of folks uh, involved in that in that process. They do charge a little bit for for getting the uh, the particulars on a on a given load, but it's well worth it if you're going to do a lot of reloading. Uh, you can go to the manufacturer, the powder manufacturer's website. Oftentimes, and in most cases, actually, the powder manufacturer will give you their load data. It's not necessarily as exhaustive because there's a lot of different bullets out there. They may not publish uh, load data for bullets that they don't manufacture, but it's another place to go look. Now, also, in your die set, if you open up your die set, there's usually document, well, always documentation in there. And I've never seen a die set that didn't have at least some load data in there. And that's how you get your recipes. Let's talk real quick about die sets. Now, when you buy your reloading press, that's uh, you know the thing with the arm that, that does all the work. For every caliber you intend to reload, you need to have the appropriate dies. What do the dies do? Well, when you're going to reload, you need to punch the old primer out. Uh, you need to be able to resize the case because the case will change its shape when you shoot. But you need to put that case back into the uh, factory specification. We'll talk about specifications there in a bit. And then you need something that's going to help you seat the bullet to the correct depth. And that's what the dies do. Uh, and some die sets will come with two dies and some with four. It just depends on well, the features of the die set. Uh, this one we've got here is for 38 Special. It's uh, from Lee. Uh, it's the documentation we talked about earlier. This one's got a carbide factory crimp die. Now, uh, it has uh, got a carbide coating on it, and that makes it so that you uh, you don't need as much lubrication to uh, ensure that your bullets don't stick in these things or the cases don't stick. The carbide coating helps with that. This one is the crimp die, and what that does is it puts a crimp around the, the bullet, the uh, projectile at the end, uh, sort of a factory crimp. It puts it back into factory specification, and the crimp on the bullet is very important. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, this one here is what's called a powder through expanding die. So that will expand the, the case mouth and allow you to dump powder in. A lot of times, uh, depending on the kind of powder dispenser that you're using, that acts as a funnel, which is very nice. And this guy here is a carbide sizing die. So that's going to uh, resize the case for you to make sure it's uh, back into specification. And then finally, this guy here is for seating the bullet. And it has adjustments on it to, to so that you can change the depth that you seat the bullets in. Uh, one other thing that you'll find with these uh, die sets are something on, potentially that looks like that. If you see one of these, essentially take it out and do that with it. Throw it in the garbage. You don't want the thing. What it is supposed to do, and, and you'll see in the docs, is uh, help you measure powder. And when we talked about powder earlier, of course, some powder is very fine granules, and sometimes they're sticks and long, and they take up more space. So you can imagine with a very fine powder, more of it will fit in that little bucket than something that's got, you know, uh, takes up a lot of space. So really, uh, I don't know why they include them in these sets. Uh, I think that's a throwback to an earlier time. I'm not really sure, but we never use them. And, and frankly, I consider them quite dangerous. And that's, we're talking about being safe here. So take that thing and chuck it. That's my opinion. Uh, one of the other things that you'll get is uh, this little dude here. And I, I didn't bring a 38 out here with me, but Here's a nine millimeter, and this uh, goes on to your reloading press so that you can uh, attach the bullet to it, and it keeps it uh, uh, steady while you're performing the different operations. So this will be appropriate for uh, for the caliber that you're reloading. So that's basically a die set. All right, let's talk about uh, measuring powder because that can really be a critical piece of uh, of your reloading process because doing it wrong can can be very dangerous. Powder is measured in, uh, in units called grains. Now, I don't know, really know the history of grains, but I know why they use them. Uh, you, sometimes you have to deal with very, very small amounts of powder, and I can't imagine using uh, grams or ounces to try and do this. So uh, the, the unit is called a grain, and there are 7,000 grains to a pound. It's the same measurement that you will see when you're uh, looking at your projectile. You know, the, the uh, 115 grain bullet in this nine millimeter cartridge. It's the same measurement scale. So your powder is measured out using the same units. Doing that, uh, you need particular tools to do that with. 
Uh, here are a couple examples of ones that we use here when we're being very, very precise. We use this electronic uh, system from RCBS, I think, built that. Uh, now, you don't have to have one of those. We, we invested in it because we were doing some very precise uh, hunting loads and, and trying to get down at the, the best target load we could. But typically, you're using a, a powder drop like this one here. We've had several of these. Uh, we're kind of digging this one from, uh, from Lee here. It, it works really well with this press. You've got to adjust. Uh, both these have adjustments on them to make sure that you get the right amount out. And you have to tinker, out, tinker with them quite a bit to, to make sure you get the right measurement. And then as you go through a reloading session, you need to go back and make sure, particularly with this powder drop, and make sure you get the right amount that you're still consistently getting the right load. So about every 100 rounds or so, uh, we'll take in and go out and grab a scale, which has the ability to uh, measure in grains, and make sure that we've got the, we're still getting the right amount of powder out for our recipe. Why is that so important? Well, if you think about it, uh, particularly on some of the larger cases, uh, I think 38 Special, which is a very long case or a 357 Magnum, uh, you're not filling that whole case up when you put the powder in there. It just doesn't, it doesn't require you to fill it all up for the recipe typically. So it is quite possible if you goof up to get double the amount of powder uh, inside that case and create a load that is potentially explosive. Another risk is you're reloading along and you don't get enough powder in there. And when the round goes off, the bullet doesn't ex actually exit the barrel and then the next round you fire and goes and contacts that other bullet that's already lodged in the barrel and uh, kaboom, you get an explosion. So it's very important that you measure your uh, powder accurately. Let's talk about crimping because that can be really important. So in part of the process, you're going to flare the case mouth open so that you have room to put your new projectile in. And the last thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that that case is then returned back to specification. And typically you can get, to, and a lot of the die sets will have these, is a factory crimp die. And we talked about this earlier. And that's what this does. It returns the case mouth back to the proper crimp for that round. Now, you're going to hear lots of discussion about how much to crimp and whether to crimp and all of that. You need to make sure, no matter what you're doing, that you return the bullet back to the factory specification. That is the safest thing to do. Um, and so how do you know what the factory specification is? Let's talk about that. When you're talking about ammunition specifications, there is really one authority, and that's SAMI. And that's short for the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute. I just remember SAMI, it's a lot easier. They were founded in uh, 1926 at the request of the federal government, just out of recognition that you know people have to know, particularly if they're gonna reload, but they have to know what the specification is for ammunition. Now. I'm, I don't pretend to be a, an expert or historian on SAMI, but I know what it is that they do for us. So if you go up to their website and we'll take a look at it here, you can find the detailed specification for uh, pretty much every common round out there. If SAMI doesn't have a specification on it, I wouldn't reload it. And that's the bottom line. You need to be able to know when you're reloading, how long uh, the case is supposed to be how long the round is supposed to be in the end. By the time you've actually created the round, how long is that supposed to be? And what's the tolerance that you have? Uh, for neck down cartridges like this, it's important to understand how far from the bottom of the neck to the end of the case, how far that should be. And you can look on the SAMI web website, pull up the specification for the 223 and see exactly what that's supposed to be. All of those numbers are very, very important to understanding whether you've created a safe load or not. Now, there are a couple of nice tools out there that will help you measure to make sure that you've got it right. So let's take a look at those. There are lots of different tools out there for doing this. I'm just gonna show you a couple we use here at the studio that we like and have found are uh, really effective. This is a Lyman case gauge in nine millimeter. And basically what this does, it allows us to take a, complete, a completed load and test to see if we're back within SAMI specifications. It's real simple. You take your uh, completed load and you drop it in the hole there. If it's uh, level with this end, uh, that's good. You wanna make sure that it doesn't stick out beyond this hole here and that it doesn't rattle around. Now, if it won't fit inside that hole, you probably uh, need to run it back through the crimping die or you need to check and make sure that you're not out of round. But it should fit inside there without rattling. So that's a good quick test. Now, that won't tell you whether you've seated the bullet too deeply or you haven't seated it far enough, those things all affect how much pressure you're going to create. 
Not seating the bullet deeply enough, you don't create enough pressure, your round may not exit the barrel. Seating it too deep, you can compress the load inside and create too much pressure, so that's very important. You do need to keep a set of calipers here, and I'll show you. We're using, uh, these are from Franklin, I think. And uh, basically what that does, it allows you to check to make sure that the bullet overall, the overall length is not too short or too long. And you can find those lengths uh, typically uh, in the reloading die, we'll have them. You can get them uh, right out of the SAMI specification. And you need to make sure that you stay within those lengths. Now, some of your uh, load data will actually tell you if you're loading this way, you need to have uh, an even more precise overall length, and it's important to, to pay attention to those details as well. Here's uh, another Lyman case gauge, this one in, in 223. And this is really important in these neck down cartridges because when you drop the bullet in, if, uh, if the neck is out of whack, it won't fit all the way in there. So it's a good quick test for determining whether your, uh, your case has gone out of, uh, out of spec. Uh, here's another example with a lot of different testers in it, uh, testing a 45 ACP. Uh, that makes sure you're back into spec for that. Uh, don't forget, you're going to need the calipers. So that's some different ways to check uh, to make sure that you are back inside specification, at least the, the same spec for the bullet. And you, you do, again, need to pay attention uh, really close to the load data that you're using. They may have additional requirements to make sure that you're within the tolerance of that recipe. Well, that's our basic reloading video. Hope you found it useful. I want to finish up with a couple of final thoughts. Uh, reloading can be a really fun and rewarding hobby. It can be. And arguably, it can save you a few dollars, although I find it just helps me shoot more. Um, but there are a couple of things you really need to keep in mind. First of all, all of this data that I've talked about, SAMI specs and the recipes, you really do need to read and understand that stuff. You can't just sort of wing it. It gets too dangerous, folks. You also need to be very patient. patient. This is not something you can rush. You have to take your time. You have to follow along, follow the recipe. If you're gonna be safe, you gotta do that. Last but not least, leave the experimenting to the professionals. To experiment with different loads, you're going to need specific environments to do that safely. And it's not typically uh, something your average guy has around the house. So leave the experimenting to the professionals. All right, folks, always remember anyone can shoot and really Anyone can reload if you're willing to spend the time. Anyone can shoot and have fun. We'll see you next time. Weeha!